designed to improve the offense, the skills, procedures, and reactions that produce an effective offense are shaped by various drills. But in order to get the most value from such drills, they must bear a realistic relationship to the game situations. The goal of the offense is, of course, to score. All offensive maneuvers and tactics are intended to culminate in a basket. Everything builds up to the successful shot. The highly arched shot swishing through the net is a satisfying sight to the offense. Trajectory is high, and there is good reason for the high arc of the ball's path. A high trajectory makes the basket a bigger target. If the ball were to be dropped straight down, the basket would present a perfect circle and a maximum target. Under other conditions, the basket appears as an ellipse. The more shallow the trajectory of the ball, the smaller the target. Hence the importance of a highly arched shot. Shooting skill under game conditions is essential to the team's success. Every player must develop this skill to the utmost. But with any given skill level, the chances of making a shot depend upon two features, distance from the basket and the extent to which the potential shooter is guarded. Probability of scoring can vary all the way from virtual certainty, where a man is close to the basket and unopposed, to almost zero, where a man is far away from the basket and guarded. Actually then, when we refer to scoring opportunity, we are talking about the chances of a shot being successful. The immediate offensive task is to create a good scoring opportunity for a teammate Nearly all maneuvers are designed to bring about this opportunity. The fast break can affect the quickest and often the best scoring opportunity. By a combination of surprise and speed, a player may both be near the basket and unguarded. More commonly achieved is the so-called semi-fast break. Here the offense outnumbers the defense. One player may have a chance to make an unguarded shot. The typical situation is one in which a set offense confronts a set defense. It is then up to the offense to create a good scoring opportunity for a teammate. The importance of the free throw is often overlooked. An opponent's foul affords a completely unguarded shot and hence a good scoring opportunity. No great team ever starts a practice session without a thorough warm-up and the warm-up is never left to chance or to the whims of individuals. The warm-up is organized and supervised. Court awareness, protection of the ball, movement, a quick change in direction, drive for the basket. The dribble should be an important part of the offense. It can permit control of the ball and lead directly to a scoring opportunity. But just to be able to dribble is not enough. There must be the ability to change direction, reverse the hands, and protect the ball. Above all, the dribbler must be able to keep his head up. Only in this way can he watch the situation. Can he maintain the court awareness so necessary to a good offense? In short, dribbling must be a highly ingrained skill. The ability to dribble effectively requires intense practice. But this practice must be carried out under realistic conditions. Conditions that put a premium on the same movements that are needed in a game. Dribble tag is a valuable drill. One player is it, and his task is to tag one of the others. All players are confined to a designated area and must dribble at all times. They must either avoid being tagged or tag. The drill affords intensive training in keeping the head up, in watching the total situation, in being able to stop and go quickly, in the ability to make a fast change in direction. Dribbling skills tend to become second nature. In some ways, the layup is the surest shot of all. This is because of nearness to the basket, yet the layup takes place deep in defense territory. Therefore, the shot is seldom made without opposition, which may take various forms. Because it is realistic to assume that there will be defensive opposition to the layup, it is important to include simulated opposition in the layup drills. The coach or teammates play the role of defense. In the early stages, 
the players become accustomed to shouting and waving of the hands by the defenders. As the drill progresses, the athlete learns to make accurate layup shots under conditions of body contact. At first, body contact is light. Gradually, the intensity of contact is increased. The player learns to adjust unconsciously or compensate for the contact, and he is able to concentrate on accurate shooting. In summary, defensive opposition can be expected near the basket. Realistic layup drills prepare the player for such opposition, and he is less disturbed in the game. If attempted near the basket, the jump shot, like the layup, is almost certain to be opposed. Accuracy and concentration must be maintained in the face of disturbing factors. A bounce pass, up for the shot, the shot is contested, but made. The same shot from a different angle and in slow motion. Poise under pressure, concentration. The ability to shoot well under pressure is increased by realistic drills. There is little value simply in practicing unopposed shots because the opposition is bound to be there. At first, the simulated pressure amounts to a waving of the arms. This creates a disturbing element and a partial screening. Later on, the defense pressure is stepped up by means of light contact. Eventually, considerable body contact is applied. The fine athlete learns to adjust astonishingly well to even strong body contact. It would seem that there could be no accuracy under these conditions, yet with training it can be done. A common game situation is the so-called one-on-one -on -one facing. The player with the ball has a defender between him and the basket. If the offensive man is within range and not closely guarded, he takes the shot. In fact, if the players cannot hit from the outside, the team cannot hope to be successful. Hence the need to practice such shots and under realistic conditions, such as receiving a pass and the presence of a defender. The decision to take the shot depends on the action of the defender. If he does not drop back, he may be faked into doing so. Fake, movement back, the shot. Another offensive reaction to the one-on-one -on -one facing situation is to drive for the basket. The defender may press to protect against the shot. If he does, drive. Again, a rushing defense, the drive. In the drill, the goal is to make the defender commit himself. When he does, appropriate action is taken quickly. The great value of the drill lies in its ability to teach instant and effective response to a common game situation. The effort of a man without the ball in the vicinity of the basket is to move so as to be free to receive the ball and then go on to score. Movement without the ball drills are essential parts of the training program. Fake to the basket, back quickly to receive the ball. A convincing fake quick advantage of the defender's move. The movement can be carried out in reverse. Fake toward the ball, a quick break for the basket. The drill puts a premium on footwork, the ability to maneuver, and quick reactions, all needed to win games. When the offensive player receives a pass under the basket, two situations usually exist. First, his back is toward the basket, Second, he is apt to be closely guarded. There are three basic moves to get free of the defender. A vertical drive can be made. A shoulder fake to the inside, and a drive along the lane. Another option is the horizontal drive. Here the fake is to the outside, and the move across the free throw lane. Different combinations of moves can be carried out. For example, two horizontal moves can be combined. The fast break occurs when through a combination of speed and surprise, offensive players reach the area of the basket before the defense is ready. A numerical advantage exists. Offense outnumbers defense. Quickly by a defender and toward the basket. Now we have one defender and two offensive players. 
a two to one advantage in the optimum shooting area. The goal is to obtain an unguarded shot before the defense can arrive. But the ability to bypass a defender can be a critical part of the fast break. For this reason, a realistic drill should always include one defender near midcourt. Speed is of the essence. All faking, passing, and shooting must be done quickly. This means that these skills must be highly developed. In addition to speed and skills, conditioning is vital. A well-conditioned team can physically tire their opponents. Under the boards is the place for action and contact. Here games are often won or lost. The capable rebounder can be as valuable as the high scorer. The rebound can result in a quick score. In offensive rebounding, a player may get a chance to score quickly. He may both capture the ball and shoot while still in the air. Lacking the chance for an immediate score, the rebounder tries to capture the ball. Landing is balanced, up for the shot. A tap completes the scoring effort. The surest way to control the rebound is to capture the ball with both hands. Up for the shot and fouled. Capture the ball into the basket often leads to an extra point. Various numbers of players can participate in rebound drills. However, in its simplest form, two men line up while a third shoots. The offensive man tries to outmaneuver the defender. Fake to the right, movement toward the ball. Because skilled offensive rebounding is so important to success, considerable practice time is given to tapping. But it is important to make this practice time yield maximum value. The ball is actually cradled, not tapped. The hand forms a contour that fits the ball. In this way, good contact with the ball is made with greatly increased control. The wrist is loose and flexed. The cradle is clearly the best way of directing the ball and should be practiced. When a player works alone, he must not succumb to the tendency just to practice a few isolated shots. He should simulate game conditions. He should dribble, shoot quickly, put backspin on the ball so that it reaches him as it would in a game. And of course, he keeps moving as he would in a game. Each drill is designed to develop offensive skills, skills based on the reality of the game itself. But in addition to the acquisition of needed skills, there is an important overall point, and that is conditioning. In practice sessions, the drills are carried out to fatigue. Work, work, and more work bring conditioning. The successful team is the one that remains effective and ready to go in the final moments of the game.